So there's a lot of debate around um, dieting or fasting, starvation. Um, there are folks that would say, um, oh, it's got to be intermittent fasting. And by that, they mean certain number of hours per day, limiting the number of hours you eat. There are others who say, no, uh, fasting for days is okay. Um, and then you see a bunch of debate in between. I, I would personally say all fasting is, by definition, intermittent. Permanent fasting does not work. And maybe pardon the sarcasm, but um, <clears throat> actually, I'd like to go over some research which would uh, deal with one of the major fr uh, concerns and frustrations around prolonged fasting. And that is the perception that after, uh, after a day or two, your basal metabolic rate drops so much that uh, you're not burning as many calories. Actually, this research would indicate not only is that not true, but actually the opposite may be true. You may be burning more calories. Uh, but first of all, before we go into that, I'll um, just introduce myself. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. Uh, started off as an ER doc got very frustrated with the unnecessary early death and disability that comes into an ER. Went to Johns Hopkins to get training in prevention and uh, ended up running the program in preventive medicine uh, training there. Uh, have for the past, what, 30 years since then, uh, been in roles where I teach primary care docs how to do prevention. Um, this is the prevention channel. It's much better to prevent your heart attack than to try to survive it and see if somebody can cure you of it. So <clears throat> here's a couple of uh, the, the things that you'll see to justify daily intermittent fasting. And Frank, and I'll just uh, give you a spoiler. From my perspective, I think both are very good. Uh, pro prolonged fasting as well as daily uh, restriction. Um, fasting mimicking. I also, I would agree that that's very helpful as well. Now, <clears throat> here's one of the, the concepts that's shown to uh, push for daily or intermittent fasting. Basically, they're looking at uh, insulin levels. And if you don't know the, Im the impact of insulin, both major impacts, you should. Uh, you should only if you're age 40 or older or if you ha already have known insulin resistance, or if you're a, an athlete, um, so if, or if you're a living, human, uh, breathing human being. Basically, insulin unlocks the, uh, the glucose channel in our cell walls, uh, mostly muscle and liver cell walls, which allows us to take uh, glucose out of the bloodstream and into those cells, therefore decreasing the blood glucose or blood sugar level. That's not the important thing that we're talking about here. What we're talking about here in terms of fasting is that it also shuts off fat burning. So you want to have lower levels of insulin in order to be able to burn fats. So people look at this and say, look, after 12 hours of, starv of uh, starvation or um, Fasting, you hit that low sweet spot of insulin uh, level. But I would say, look, look over here at day two. You get an even lower level. So I don't think that's a great justification for saying you need to eat again every day. Um, <clears throat> here's the research that I talked about, or uh, I mentioned earlier, prior to the introduction. It was published in the American Journal of Nutrition back in 2000. I'll give you a link uh, below the video. It was done by Zauner uh, and group. And basically it says, resting energy expenditure in short starvation periods, short-term starvation, is increased as a result of an increase in serum norepinephrine. So not only is the, your metabolic rate not decreased, it's actually increased according to this research. Now, how did they do it? They took 11 lean, healthy volunteers 
and they subjected them to an 84-hour fast. How did they measure metabolic rate? Here's uh, an interesting component about that. They measured that using a thing called indirect calorimetry. So how does indirect calorimetry work? Well, they take a large bag that, uh, or they clamp and they, they measure the gas that you're breathing. And then they look at the amount uh, of oxygen in that gas to say, how much oxygen is this person breathing? Oxygen is obviously used for um, metabolic burn. So the more oxygen you burn, the higher your metabolism. So <clears throat> here's a, a typical indirect calorimetry device. This person's lying there. It's measuring the gas that she's breathing. Now, if that may trigger you in terms of thinking about, those of you who are athletes and have been deep into athletic training, you may be thinking of this. And there's a good reason you're thinking of this. This is looking at measuring what we call MVO2 max. Well, MVO2 max is a very similar process. It's measurement of the volume of oxygen that this athlete can burn. Uh, therefore, again, it's more of a short-term, uh, what is his capacity for burning oxygen? Very similar process. Now, what did they, these folks do? Again, they took 11, athlete, uh, 11 lean, healthy people uh, who volunteered to do a, an 84-hour fast. Now, what did they, they measured the uh, oxygen burn. They also measured something else mentioned in the title, norepinephrine. They also measured glucose levels and insulin levels. Insulin levels really didn't change that much between days one and three. Uh, glucose level did drop. It dropped about 30%. Here's what happened with metabolic rate, though. Metabolic rate increased from 3.97 kilojoules per minute on day one to um, 4.53 kilojoules per minute on day three. So that's a 50% increase in basal metabolic rate. Now, why did that happen? Remember, we mentioned a couple of times norepinephrine. First of all, do you know, and norepinephrine doubled, more than doubled from day one to day three. So what is norepinephrine? It's uh, epinephrine is the same thing as adrenaline. Remember, it's the fight or flight hormone. Uh, it's also associated with re release of cortisol. So these things that goose your body up for performance um, increased. Your norepinephrine is more like a long-acting epinephrine. And it was significantly increased during day three of fasting, resulting in that increased metabolic rate. So some interesting things regarding uh, uh, starvation or... Uh, uh, intermittent fasting, and as I would say, it's fasting is fasting. It just depends on the interval that you're talking about, and this would indicate that, no, it's not true. When you hear people say that you slow down and you stop burning calories with prolonged fasting, probably not the case. Thank you for your interest.